Commenters have been asking for a badge cam where the cops do everything right. Here you go. Hi everyone, welcome to today's badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. This time I legitimately forgot where it is. I'm really bad at this. <laughs> Columbus. Knoxville. Knoxville. I knew it. Knoxville. <laughs> the Storm Hunter WX weather app is free to download and use and provides you with warning of severe weather even before the National Weather Services issue alerts. This advanced weather app is an important tool for awareness of severe weather that I use every day. Download and use it totally free without in-app purchases on iOS or Android at the link below. The call that has come in is a man who is firing a gun in this apartment complex. Our officer is the first to respond. He is going to find out very quickly. Yes, indeed, that man is firing his gun in the apartment complex. Let's listen in. Hold traffic, hold traffic, 263. Mr. Hands! Let me see your hands! Drop, drop the gun. Drop it. Drop the gun. Stop me more cars rush. Drop the gun. Drop it. I have a male with the gun. He fired off a couple rounds. He throws the gun in his hand, not sending commands. Drop the gun! Drop it! He's shooting at me right now, full traffic. He's on the back patio of, I'll tell you the building, just minute, just come to 7730, you'll see me. Drop the gun! Come to 7730 Hackberry. Go inside! Okay, it's the one, two, three building, third apartment in. He keeps coming in and out of the apartment. Drop it! Drop the gun! Bottom floor, it's an Asian male, no shirt, black shorts, long black hair, holding a silver handgun. <laughs> He's going in and out of the apartment, firing the, sh the handgun into the ground at this time. Stop! Stop! Put the gun down! Stop! Put it down! Drop it! Drop it! Drop it! Drop the gun! Police action shooting, the suspect's still moving, he's on the ground. 
Drop it! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Yeah. Yep. Drop it! The gun's empty. Drop it! He's already pointing. He's already Drop shot it! at us. Throw the gun away so we can get you help, bud. Throw the gun away so we can get you some help. Crawl away from the gun! Crawl away from the gun, man. Crawl away from the gun! Crawl away from the gun. Crawl away from the gun. We'll get you some help, bud. Do not, do not move left. Do you hear me? I'm clear. You got a rifle right behind you on your left. Yeah, I'm clear. Crawl away from the gun. We'll get you some help, man. Now, now, we'll go up. Hey. You ready? Ready? Go. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Stop. You don't need to run. Yeah, yeah. Oh. 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 Our perp actually lived through this one. He has been charged with a, a host of charges, including carrying a firearm without a permit, which I thought was an interesting one. Thankfully, no one else was injured in this one. All right, I have a challenge for you. I want you to leave a comment with your worst advice for Mike to remember where our badge cam lessons are from. So leave us your bad advice for Mike. I really think the walk up here is pretty interesting to me because we hear gunshots really quickly on this one. And so our officer is gonna get a gun in his hand, which he absolutely needs to have here. But then he also was like, wait a minute, I'm gonna kinda hang out. And I don't mind him slow rolling a little bit here. I mean, if the guy's actively killing people is one thing, if he's just having you know, a desk pop is something else. I will say having measured this on the Google Maps, uh, his initial contact with this guy is at about 40 yards. That's a heck of a shot for most people, Mike. It is. Let me say a couple things here, John, right off the bat. First of all, <laughs> if you're an officer, if you're a deputy, you get dispatched to a call and they're like, hey, someone's out here shooting. Do us all a favor and act like that's absolutely the thing that's happening until you can prove otherwise. Now, I understand you get, a, you get these calls all the time. Oh, I think someone's shooting outside when it's, you know, it's some kids with M80s or whatever. But if the, if the dispatch call is, there's someone shooting in, in our courtyard, your mindset should be, okay, that's almost certainly what's happening. I'm going to respond appropriately. And number one thing to do when you're responding to someone who may be out in the courtyard shooting is arm yourself with a rifle uh, or a shotgun or something. Because this whole thing could have been over a lot faster, potentially, if he had a, an, an AR platform with him. Um, I guarantee you one of the reasons he didn't shoot was because he wasn't, he wasn't sure he could make that shot that distance. Guess what? Uh, a slug from a, from a 12 gauge or uh, you know, or, or an M4 or an AR platform rifle, and you're making this shot. So act like there's definitely a shooter. That way, you know, you're ready for it and you're mentally prepared for that to happen. Because I, I feel like he was shocked when he actually heard a gunshot. Um, it seemed a little casual. And then, can we talk about comms, John? Is it time? It's time. Yeah. All right. So we like to harp here a lot about yelling things like uh, "shots fired, shots fired." or officer needs help, or sort of these vague things when you're in the middle of this. Now, I understand he's trying to get back up there, and that's fine. Um, maybe he feels like this guy isn't a threat to anyone right the second. He can get more units there, that's all well and good. A couple things, one, he had some really long way of saying, send me cover, it was like, send me more units fast, or whatever it was, I can't remember what he said. Um, something more succinct, department-wide, by the way, something more succinct, cover now code cover, something really that'll get people's attention. And as soon as you say that, the dispatcher should be hitting the alert tone saying, all right, everybody listen up, Some serious stuff's happening, here's where it's happening, getting units on the way to you. Efficiency in all things, but especially efficiency in communications. What else could he be doing in this moment on the radio if he has to be on the radio? Well, start talking about which way is this apartment facing? Uh, which way should your backup units be coming in to avoid getting in the line of fire? Things like that, things that are more useful than just He's wearing brown pants, Asian male. Um, send me all the help you possibly can. A lot of this, John, I think was kind of like, dear diary, I'm a little scared and freaked out right now, which is fine. It's okay to be scared and freaked out. But uh, I think more efficient radio comms would have helped him out a lot. Well, and we understand, right? It's a stressful situation, but this is one of the reasons that we say, hey, you really got to think about the radio because you're not, 
you don't want to just be narrating what's going on, right? They don't, nobody needs to know that. You need to tell other responders what's to come. Now, the first shot that our officer takes here is at 25 yards. Now, again, if you got a long gun, you got a properly loaded shotgun or an, you know, an AR pattern rifle here, a patrol carbine, or even a red dot on your pistol, um, a 25 yard shot, 20, 25 yards is certainly doable with iron sights for most people. Most cops that I know at this kind of distance are really going to struggle to make these hits. And you've got to put this guy down who is shooting at the cops now. Yeah, I can vouch for what John just said. I was a firearms instructor for a number of years at my old agency. And yeah, cops aren't necessarily any better at shooting than anyone else. There are plenty of civilians that I've now met in the ASP universe, uh, people at our conference, people like Riley Bowman, who I guess was a cop, but um, these people, um, the average person that joins the police department, uh, half of them are disinterested in guns. They don't care about guns or red and blue lights or any of that. Yeah. It's just a job to them. They're not interested in getting extra training. So I'd say fully two thirds of, of cops would be very, very hesitant to take a shot from 25 yards, especially with iron sights. So as I said before, uh, the reason God gave us pistols is to fight our way back to our rifle. So Bring a long gun to something like this. It's absolutely critical. Um, would, it, would it end potentially differently? Yeah, and, and I think that we need to think situationally here as well because we've zoomed in here as our officers moved in a little bit. The guys rolled away. So we're still about 25 yards away. And notice now he's on the ground. So, so when we're talking about situational marksmanship, this is an odd presentation. Also, you notice here, if you're going to miss high or you're going to miss low here, you got to choose to miss low. So, so you don't want to miss at all. You want to get your hit. But... Of course, you know, if you got to shoot and you still see that this guy has a gun in his hand, you need to hit him. But if you're going to miss here, you'd much rather miss into the ground in front of the guy than miss into the apartment behind him. And, and that's why you got to think situationally about this stuff. Yeah, this, this is why training is so important. If you're a trainer for an agency, try to think outside the box. My good buddy Andy back in San Diego, when he, he took over the firearms program, man, we were doing stuff we never did before, bounding overwatch. And people were like, why do I need to know bounding overwatch? Because you might need it. Uh, shooting from un untraditional positions and shooting at things and people that are in untraditional positions is a good thing to do in training. So as I always say, your first rep isn't in the field in real life for realsies with live bullets. And, and uh, again, I will say this for most, flat range skills are the priority because if you can't hit him, uh, you know, a target of that size when the sun is shining and nobody is, is shooting back at you, you certainly won't be able to do it when all the chips are down. So the flat range skills need to be there and then uh, the, the bounding and those things and the other skills come into play. Also, hey, this guy went down for a while and then came back and shot some more. So this is one of the reasons that officers, okay, the threat goes down. You wanna stay vigilant because you know until you've got this guy into custody, he can reemerge and that's why you, you see officers back away so often and kind of wait and slow their roll once the guy goes down. I think that was actually probably the right choice in this particular instance. Thankfully, the guy does end up going down here. I, I also think our officer kind of hung out an awful lot in no man's land here. He kind of, you know, standing on the grass, just going, I'm kind of sort of far enough away from him. Uh, I, I don't have cover. I'm not kind of looking for cover. I'm not trying to find that. And, and of course, private citizen encounters break way faster than this. Um, but for cops, this is why we teach cover so much. Now, Mike, I do want to talk here about our two officers who do have the long guns out when they're about to go take this guy into custody. Number one, yes, have the long gun. Absolutely. But I want to think about the left side officer here because you notice he snuck out to the left so then that way he can see the perp. But what that means is he's not in any better position in terms of cover than he would be if he was right up next to the other officer and he would eliminate the risk of that officer getting into his line of fire. So hear me, either use the dude in front of you as cover and put that muzzle way down or get up online. Trust me, I understand. I know officers and, and deputies watch these our videos sometimes for training. I did it for 30 years. I understand wanting to see what's happening. I understand wanting to be able to see the potential threat. Just like when you do a search warrant, you're gonna break left, your partners, the guy behind you or the gal behind you is gonna break right. You have to trust them, trust that they're paying attention to what's happening. I think in this position, John, really, everybody else stay behind the brick wall. We only need one gun on this guy at this point. I think he has, a, he has an AR or something like an AR. So let this officer do his job. Every couple minutes, if nothing's changing and you're at a holding pattern, fine. Switch off. You know, um, give the guy give the guy a break after a couple minutes. Holding that gun up for a long time can get a little fatiguing. So, you know, this this whole idea that we're all poking up on the side, I understand the, the desire to see what's happening. Sometimes you're better off just letting your partner do their job. And like I said, 
every so often you get tired, switch them out, switch positions, and that way uh, everyone can stay rested and ready for whatever might end up happening. Yeah, and, and one last little thing here. I'm glad they got this guy into custody. They got this going, got him to the help that he needs, and he's going to be facing charges. And their officer, of course, goes to get that guy's blood off him. If you if you had the amount of time to set up this this uh, you know custody here, and you were setting up all the rifles and all that stuff, somebody needs to set up as the man who's going to put hands on, or the woman who's going to put hands on. And that means that's why you keep gloves on you, right? So even if you don't end up with a set of nitrile gloves or whatever, even you know your paramechanics gloves or something like that will keep enough of the blood off of you for a little bit in order to not get those bloodborne pathogens because you do not want to end up with the, you know the hepatitis from somebody that you end up taking into custody so hepatitis ain't yeah. nobody got time for that ain't nobody got time for that so listen I, I think at the end of the day thank god these officers handled the problem that was in front of them i'm glad that they got this guy into custody maybe a few things to think about here to better cover our ass